So let's do prime factorization, right, with the TI-84+, and you'll be able to do it also on the TI-83, or the 89, uh, 89 premium, or the CE. They all work the same, practically. Okay, so to do prime factorizations, we will need to know our prime numbers. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, at least these, and then much more. We don't know really where it stops. Mathematicians haven't found the biggest large numbers, but there is one, at least, a very big one. Um, prime numbers are divisible by themselves, or one. The There's only one prime number that's even, that's two, everything else, else is odd. You see, if you take six, right, which is called a composite number, it's composed by primes. Six is broken down into primes, and there are no primes that are broken down into other primes. They're, they're unique. And so we can take 10, which is a, it is a composite number, and we can compose it uh, through primes. To do that, we know this is ending up with zero, so what we wanna do is put a bracket, and we can say two goes into 10, right? 10 divided by two, five times. And yes, some of us know our multiplication tables. So 10 can be broken down into two times five. There's a particular reason why you want to use prime factorizations, right, on other type of problems, like reducing, and we'll see, we'll see that in a minute. Let's do 50. Okay, 50, can it be broken down into primes? Of course it can. It ends in zero, so we know that two goes into 50. 25 times. And if we press divide here, right, because I know 5 will go into 25, it would be 5. So 50 is broken down into 2 times 5 times 5, but it's also a shortcut, uh, or a shortcut notation is 5 times 5 squared. Your teacher might do it as a tree, 50, right? Two goes, in, uh, 2 goes into 50 25 times, and then this is breaking, broken down to 5 times 5, and then you circle your prime numbers. I, I don't like the, the tree. I like this method with the brackets because I can see the numbers outside. Those are the ones I'm going to use. And also, the last number that comes out should be prime. Okay. Uh, let's do 350. We know it ends in zero, so we can, uh, two goes into 350, 175. This ends in five, so we can use five. Now you could use a three, you'll find out it doesn't work, but five will work, okay? So we divide by five, 35, okay? One other thing too, you could have started with five here, uh, 5 goes into 350 and so forth, but eventually you would have, have ended up using 2. So it's always good to start with the smaller numbers, 35 here. I know 5 will go into 35, so right here, we're going to divide, right, by 5, 7. So 350 is equal to 2 times 5 squared times 7. So 350 can be broken down. 350 is a composite number, can be broken down to primes, and that's the prime factorization using the TI-84. Now, what's so great about doing prime factorizations is because you can reduce fractions, for example. 50 can be broken down into 2 times 5 times 5. 350 is 2 times 5 times 5 times 7. Okay. The 2s go away, the 5s go away, the 5 goes away, that's a 1. So that's 1 over 7. Pretty neat, right? So in this calculator, 50 divided by 350, right, enter, gives you a decimal, but uh, is it under math, right, and frac? Take the answer and make it a fraction, 1 over 7. Pretty cool, right? Pretty neat. Okay, let's do 101. Ah, 101. It turns out 101 is a prime number, okay? Let's, let's put it out there. But 
when you take 101 and you say, okay, I don't think 2 goes into it. Let's see, 101 divided by 2? No. Hmm. How about 3? 101 divided by 3? No. Ooh, 5. 101 divided by 5? No, I don't think so. Like, how far do you go? Where's the cutoff point? Because I don't know all my prime numbers, you know, and we know that there's more after 101. Eventually, you would have said, oh, that's a prime number. So where can we stop? Well, it turns out that if you take the square root of 101, right, the square root of 101, which gives you 10.049, which is the next prime number would be 11, it means that that's a cutoff point. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11. If you go up to 11, there is no other number that will go into it, most likely. And you can say it's a prime number. I think we did 5, right? 101 divided by 7 does it go nicely. And 101 divided by 11? Nope. So this is a prime number. Make sure you write it out. <clears throat> okay. How about 51? You might say to yourself, ah, 51 is, looks like one of those prime numbers, but it's not. Okay, 51. Take the square root of 51, right? Uh, second x squared, 51. You press enter. That gives you, right, 7.14, which is the next prime number is 11. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11. Can go might be able to go into 51. 51 divided by 2? Nope. 51 divided by 3? Uh, it does. 17 is a prime number. We stop. 51 is can be broken down into 3 times 17. Okay. So it is a composite. As by the way, 51, if you add the digits, 5 plus 1 gives you 6. 3 does go into 6, and if that's the case, then uh, 3 goes into 51. You see, if you have uh, something like, uh, I don't know, 2, 2, uh, 2, 2, 2, 2, right? 2 plus 2 is 4 plus 2 is 6. We know 3 goes into 6. That means 3 goes into 2, 2, 2. 2, 2, 2 divided by 3, 74. With that, right? Or 1, 2, 3, right? Uh, 1 plus 2 is 3 plus 3, 6. 1, 2, 3 divided by 3, 41. Um, and then these are ending up at 6. That's, these are not great examples, but let's say 6, 1, and 2, right? 6 plus 1 is 7, plus 2 is what? 9, right? So 6, 1, 2, divided by 3, 2, 4. See that? So sometimes you can do little tricks like that um, to help you do these prime factorizations. Prime factorizations not only help you in doing these fractions, but finding um, greatest common factors or um, doing um, maybe your factoring quadratics, right? It, it has a lot of applications, and this is just a start at a great adventure that you're going to have in math. Um, don't forget, um, please subscribe, please tell your friends, uh, please give it a thumbs up if you like it, um, and uh, tell your teachers, they might put it for the rest of the class. All right, I'll see you later, bud.